Hey everyone, this is Ron with Innovative Digital Group. So in today's training tutorial, this one is for Neil out in Quebec. Uh, this is on wireless site surveys. So this specifically, this video is going to be on a wireless site survey checklist. A lot of the techs that I'm training, they're trying to learn how do I do a wireless site survey, uh, what do you recommend, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm just going to go over this brief video. Kind of made it easier because I get this question a lot and Neil asked for this so uh, you guys could share this with the other guys in the group. So here it is. So when you're working with a customer, obviously this is going to be all virtual through email communication, possibly a phone call, etc. You also might want to visit the facility or the warehouse. So let's pretend it's a warehouse management system and they're local. Typically you do a pre-sales introduction, usually when you're working for a company you probably already would have met the customer already and done you know some kind of pre-sale presentation on, on the WMS, on the software, on the application, on the handhelds, on the hardware, on your company, etc. So you probably probably would have seen the warehouse itself. So here's the wireless site survey checklist, and it's pretty straightforward. One is you need to understand your customer's needs. Okay, so this is pretty broad. You want to get into the specifics. Okay. Why do you need the wireless site surveys? Because we are selling you a warehouse management system, an ERP, uh, an SAP solution that has a WMS module. Uh, do you need it for voice, right? A lot of customers don't really know until you actually ask them, right? Because they might be using it for a wireless site survey, but they might need multiple SSIDs because the IT manager or the owner of that company might need it for voice. They might need it for data. They might need it for streaming. They might need it for video. They might need it for uh, intercom or VoIP or something like that, wireless VoIP. Now, that is going to play a big picture in the type of site survey that you do, right? Because if you are doing an office site survey, uh, I know I did say that this was for a, war a warehouse management system, but if you're doing an office site survey and you only have one access point, but you are doing a crowded floor, you don't want 300 people on one access point, okay? You want to spread that out a little bit, okay? Uh, you know, have I seen one access point, 300 people? No, but I've seen pretty close to it, and, and it's not a pretty site, okay? So they ended up creating a lot of virtual channels, mix of APs, different radios, and it was a com complete mess. So the wireless site survey checklist, understand your customer's needs. You need to really ask, what will you be using the wireless system for? Is it specifically for RF, et cetera, et cetera? Now you want to start designing, okay? One thing that I always recommend is VLANs, you know, separate subnets, create a VLAN, break up those broadcast storms, okay? That, that's probably the first thing you want to do. But you really need to understand where the majority of the bandwidth is coming, how many users, uh, and physically the site, okay? So let's get into the next point here is a schematic. Uh, and this is days before. You always want to ask. This is weeks before because you, you, you want to look at the schematic because if you have any questions, ask your colleague, ask another engineer, ask me. Uh, look at the schematic. Look at the floor plan. Look at the drawings. Uh, ask. Look at, the, look at the legend. This might be a 10-year-old schematic or floor plan. Ask the customer, can I get an updated floor plan? Has anything changed? Will anything change? Those are some of the questions you should be asking. Has anything changed since the last 10 years? Will anything change? Uh, the schematic as well, the product, okay? RF is the worst with a lot of metal, paper, and liquid. Uh, I once did a site survey for a liquor board in Nova Scotia. That was the absolute worst. I did a paper mill in Quebec. That was another hard one. These were, um, you know, 10-ton paper rolls that looked like the size of a, a two-story house, so it, it was the most challenging wireless site survey that I have ever done. And it was based on paper mills and liquor. So bottles of liquor stacked upon stacked upon stacked, double stacked, triple stacked in a warehouse, in aisles, in very narrow aisles. So I had to use a combination of directional antennas. My rule of thumb is never use directional antenna, antennas unless needed. Okay, so... I've done very challenging ones. The biggest, the biggest square foot warehouse that I've done was 1,500 square feet. And I had to r ride a bicycle in that warehouse to do it. Anyways, so let's go to schematic floor plans. Those are the kind of questions that you want to ask, the drawings. And if you can't get the, the recent drawings, uh, just 
almost mandated because it's very necessary for, for your wireless site survey. So the next step we're going to be talking about is the visual walkthrough and some of the questions. So we talked about like the existing environment, uh, how will that change the products? Okay. One of the main questions that you want to ask, and you want to look at the, the last rack on the top, you want to ask, you know, how are these products stacked and stored? Uh, plenum, the space between the racks, is, is it always going to be like this? So as you do your visual walkthrough, walk through the warehouse, look for potential sources of interference and density. Ask them, is this stack or this pallet double stacked? And is it always going to be like this or does it change? Right? You want to ask those questions. So potential sources of interference. You want to look at stuff that creates a lot of noise, generates a lot of noise, uh, a lot of frequency. Okay, you want to see if there's any existing wireless devices that they're using, not just wireless handhelds, not existing wireless access points. Yes, you want to look at uh, switches. You want to talk to IT as well. Uh, how do you manage your network? Can people come in freely and plug in? Are they using rogue access points? Are they using different APs to get signal in different areas? Ask them those questions, okay? You, you have to really make sure that you're asking the questions because if you see a small IT team, Maybe the employees are able to do a lot of things. If you see a large IT team with a lot of strict policies, that's probably better for you. So potential sources of interference as well. Do they have a call center? I did uh, a site survey a long time ago for one of the largest auto, uh, automotive car makers in the world. And they were running 2.4 Spectrum headphones. We had nothing but problems. Nothing but problems because of those headphones. Until we turned off those headphones, uh, there was a concrete wall that was literally beside it. We went to the next side along the wall and it was nothing but interference. So you want to look at the whole environment. Okay. I, I've seen so many potential sources of interference. And like I said, in my other videos, I, I've done thousands of surveys around the world and, and I've seen it all. So, and I've been under the gun because, you know, I, I've been involved in these, these conference calls between the manufacturer between the access point manufacturer, the handheld manufacturer, as well as the, the warehouse management ERP software application maker, okay? And they're all pointing the finger at each other. My application has a timeout. It shouldn't connect. The AP manufacturer saying it's not us. It's the firmware in the handheld. The handheld vendor saying not us. Then they look to us to say, fix it, right? So you're going to be involved in all these conference calls. So be prepared to have everything, your checklist, your wireless site survey, everything that you've documented for potential sources of interference, okay? The next thing is, is current infrastructure, mounting and cabling. Uh, you want to look at the switch closet. You want to look at, at the cabling that they're using. Are they going to be running new cable? Are they going to be running or keeping their old cable, right? You want to look at the jacket, the sleeve. You want to look at the fiber too uh, because you want to see how much fiber or how much data you can transmit if you're running voice over IP, if you're streaming video over the Wi-Fi, because let's say you're running 300 plus megabits per second um, on one channel and you got multiple people just throwing tons of data, but the warehouse management system is, you know, five interface hops. What is the, the traffic being carried across that fiber? You know, is it OM1? Is it OM2? Is it OM3? Is it old, right? Is it just carrying like... Uh, you know, one megabits worth of data over across a long length, you're not going to get the, the bandwidth required, right? So you want to make those recommendations. If you're not familiar with cabling and fiber, fiber optics and the data and the transmission speeds, then I would bring someone in because you don't want to use the old infrastructure because you're not going to get the data that hauls back to the warehouse management system. And if it's not something that like 5250 that is text-based, because most 5250 warehouse management systems are text-based. So you're just sending, you know, one to two kilobits of data across the network, you know, across four hops that has to get to the destination, right? But if you're running something different and there's voice over IP and video, um, there might be a lot of potential sources of interference, not air interference, but more bottlenecks on the network. And they're going to look to you because all the customer sees is a, is a handheld or a wireless device that is not working. So those are some of the wireless uh, site survey checklists that I wanted to go through. I might have left a lot of stuff out because, uh, you know, like I said, I've seen it all. Uh, I've been through it. But these are some of the main things that you want to look at. Um, and then the day of is here. So 
the day of doing your wireless site survey, okay, uh, I'm not. I'm just going to briefly do this one because I didn't want to make the video too long. I, I've spoken to you guys uh, in in our in our Slack group. The equipment, you know, is equipment ready? Okay, the battery's charged. You want to charge your laptops. I repeat, laptops. I bring multiple laptops. You also want to bring two site survey battery packs. Make sure they are charged. You also want to bring your plugs and chargers. If you're doing a site survey and you need to fly there, I always, always send my equipment a week before. I ask the customer, did you receive my equipment? Yes, perfect. Can you plug it in and keep it plugged in until I arrive? Software up to date. That's the main thing. Okay. So prior to going out, days before, you want to make sure that you have the latest Windows update as well as your the software, whether you're running Air Magnet or EcoHow. You want to do this a week before. Because if there's a software update like a Windows update and the driver of EcoHow or Air Magnet doesn't like it and you go on site and your EcoHow doesn't start up and you flew over there, you are going to look bad. And that has happened to me. Okay. But um, so I, I was delayed a day. I was only supposed to be on site for a day. So I had to change my flight. Okay. So you want to make sure that you really do this. That's a very important step. The schematics, make sure your schematics are loaded. You have the schematics on a USB stick as well as on your laptop, because if you lose that schematic, um, you know, I've been in situations, you know, with big companies where the head office is in Germany, but I'm doing the site survey, um, you know, in Illinois, in, in the United States. Equipment operational, AP on a stick. Is the equipment operational? Is it working? Have you tested it, et cetera? Uh, the next thing you want to make sure the scissor lift is on site. If you're doing a warehouse management or warehouse you want to make sure that the scissor lift is on site. You have your safety license. You have your WSIB clearance, etc. One thing as well. I've been on site where the scissor lift was shared or belonged to the company, but the company didn't charge it. You want to make sure you want to call the company. You want to call the IT person. Make sure that the scissor lift is plugged in by the time I get there in the morning and no one is using it because what's going to happen with that scissor lift if you're doing a large warehouse that scissor lift is going to die on you and you're going to be instead of spending one day on site you're going to be spending two days on site all right on site contacts and parking uh the loading dock is it at the rear entrance this is what you want to ask because if you're doing a local site survey you're going to be hauling a lot of equipment okay access points cabling battery packs laptops I like to bring a dolly with me if I'm in the downtown area because that dolly, you're going to be carrying a lot of equipment, right? Uh, I used to do it when I was younger. I was able to carry like lots and lots of equipment. But when you're in the downtown area and you're trying to avoid people, it's just kind of, it's better off to ask for the rear entrance. Uh, is there a loading dock, etc.? If not, then you want to bring it on wheels on a dolly, okay? The second thing is the main contact because you're not going to be working with the IT person. You, you'll probably see the IT person maybe for five minutes, but the warehouse person is going to guide you and help you out throughout the warehouse. Uh, in one of my other videos, I described how I do my site surveys in a warehouse. If I didn't show you how I do it, I will show you in my next video because I don't even, sometimes I don't even use a scissor lift. I use a forklift and a pallet. Okay, so that's the, the loading dock. You want to know where the loading dock is, the rear entrance, and you have a main contact, okay? Because if you're not doing the site survey, but you're doing it from a, a PM standpoint, project management, you want to give all this information to your tech. You want to make sure, you want to go over all the stuff above equipment ready, okay? Uh, visual walkthrough and questions. I kind of touched base on this about the existing environment, potential sources of in interference, and the current infrastructure. That's... That's a given current infrastructure is like, what do you have now? And how are we going to cut this over? Is it hard cut over or all the existing guns or RF guns or laptops are going to transition over to the new, right? Because you might have some things that are in production and working, but you really need to test this. So even before doing a site survey or cutting over, you, you really want to do an actual cut over onto, onto the new wireless or test wireless even before you do a full blown out because I've seen some RF devices that were connecting to an old device. And when you did a full cutover of all the new access points, they didn't work. You actually had to manually cold boot, sorry, reload the OS and the fusion OS drivers. 
So it was almost like a complete scratch device booted from cold to make that device work to connect to the new system. And that took three days, okay? Three days to get up. So you want to make sure you do this test. Now, this is kind of outside the realm of things because sometimes when you, you do a site survey, customers are asking for a site survey, but you're not really doing an implementation of the hardware, okay? So if you're doing an implementation of the hardware and the RF equipment, then you want to do what I, what I talked about it is you want to do a hard test or a hard boot test. You want to make sure that you cut over to a new days before you're doing the real cutover, okay? But if you're just scheduled and hired or contracted to do a wireless site survey, you don't have to worry about this step. Let the IT guys worry about that. But uh, you know, like I said, um, there's so many other questions, uh, I guess, based on experience and based on conversations that you have with the IT person and the warehouse manager, these things just come up. But these are a lot of the main things. So that's it for the video. I hope you like this video about wireless site survey checklist. Uh, talk to Neil in our Slack group uh, if you don't have this template and PDF that I sent out to you guys. And thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video.